Everest is more than 200 kilometres from the earthquake epicentre, but still the tremor has caused the worst disaster ever on the mountain. On the 25th of April in 2015, a disastrous earthquake with a magnitude of 7.8 occurred in Nepal. This catastrophic event resulted in the deaths of almost 9,000 individuals and left more than 22,000 people injured, making it the most destructive earthquake to hit the region in over eight decades. The earthquake's epicenter was situated around 250 kilometers away from Mount Everest, yet it set off an avalanche that claimed the lives of 19 mountaineers and left countless others trapped at base camp or higher elevations. Mingma Giab, an expedition leader, was stationed at Everest Base Camp with his team, which consisted of 23 climbers, 25 Sherpas, and 10 support staff members when the avalanche struck. This is the story of his incredible journey of survival. Mount Everest was situated roughly 220 kilometers to the east of the epicenter, and there were between 700 and 1,000 individuals on or in the vicinity of the mountain when the earthquake occurred. This included 359 climbers at base camp, many of whom had returned following the canceled 2014 season. The earthquake set off multiple sizable avalanches in the surrounding area. One such avalanche, originating from the nearby Pumori Peak, rushed into base camp and propelled numerous tents across the Kumbu Glacier toward the lower icefall. An Indian Army mountaineering team retrieved the remains of 19 climbers from the southern base camp and rescued at least 61 trapped climbers from the mountain. At least 61 people had sustained injuries, while dozens were initially reported missing. Numerous others were stranded in higher camps because they no longer had safe routes to descend. Mingma was inside his tent when the ground started shaking. He heard a loud roar and felt himself being lifted off the ground. The next thing he knew, he was buried under a pile of snow and ice. He could hear muffled cries for help coming from the snow around him, but he couldn't see anything. The snow was so thick that he could barely move his arms and legs. He recognized the perilous situation he was in and understood that quick action was necessary for survival. With his hands and a small ice axe, he began to free himself. The weight of the snow pressed down on him, making breathing more difficult. Within a few minutes, he managed to clear sufficient snow from his face to breathe properly. Surveying his surroundings, he saw a scene of complete destruction. Tents were ripped apart, equipment strewn about, and people buried beneath the snow. He knew the odds of surviving the avalanche were low for those caught in it. He began to crawl towards the edge of the avalanche debris, seeking a way out. Progress was slow due to the deep, heavy snow. The snow's weight continued to make breathing difficult, and he began to feel the effects of hypoxia, a condition resulting from high-altitude oxygen deprivation. As he crawled, Mingma heard a faint cry for help. He followed the sound and discovered another Sherpa trapped beneath the snow. The Sherpa had suffered significant injuries, including a broken leg and numerous cuts and bruises. He couldn't leave him to perish. Using his hands and ice axe, he dug persistently for hours, gradually uncovering the injured Sherpa. When he finally pulled him from the snow, he realized they were the sole survivors in the immediate area. The two men huddled together, shivering from the cold and awaiting rescue. Knowing they had to keep moving to avoid hypothermia, he assisted the injured Sherpa to his feet and they began walking towards base camp. They trudged through the deep snow and dangerous terrain for several hours. Upon arriving at base camp, they found chaos. The earthquake had caused substantial damage, and numerous climbers and Sherpas were injured or trapped. He and the injured Sherpa were eventually airlifted to Kathmandu to receive medical care. He recounted the horrifying moment when the avalanche struck Everest base camp in an interview. He vividly described the initial moment, saying, and at once, there was a sound, boom. After that, an avalanche came and most of the camps collapsed. Then I saw the first dead body in my camp. It was one of my Sherpa. He added, then I started searching and searching all the people. Then I saw one of my clients hit by poles and it cut out his eyeball and it was hanging. And I knew we couldn't save him. The difficult decision to leave some of his clients and fellow climbers behind was something Mingma had to make. However, he found it particularly challenging to leave some of them on the mountain amidst the snow. Mingma stayed with one of his clients for an hour before the latter passed away. He was deeply connected to him, unlike others who viewed him as just one of many casualties. Further, he revealed that he carried 15 out of the 18 dead bodies and moved them around the next day we were hoping for a helicopter in the morning around 6 a.m. 
Next day was cloudy, and it wasn't until 9 or 10 a.m. that the helicopter arrived. Mingma provided further details about the rescue mission that lasted for two days after the earthquake hit. They spent the first night trying to survive in whatever way possible. The original plan was to evacuate everyone the next day. However, as soon as the internet was restored at the Everest base camp, they received news of the devastating earthquake and the increasing death toll. He was frightened when he learned that almost 9,000 people had lost their lives. Despite his personal worries, he focused on supporting the rescue mission at the Everest base camp, as there was no time to panic. Despite the chaos and danger around him, Mingma's experience as a guide and climber helped him remain calm and focused. He knew what needed to be done, and did it with determination and courage. Out of the 19 people who died in the avalanche, six were members of Mingma's team. The weather and visibility were extremely poor that day, so there was no chance to fly a helicopter. As a result of the earthquake, communication lines were damaged, rendering satellite phones unusable, adding to the chaos and confusion. He had to transport the bodies of the five deceased members of his team back to Kathmandu. At the hospital, he was confronted with the full extent of the devastation caused by the earthquake and avalanche. The room was filled with dead bodies, and the hospital had to put some of the bodies outside in the field because there was no room left. The overwhelming scene put the tragedy of the Everest avalanche into perspective for him. The experience left a deep imprint on him, but he has continued to guide and climb Everest. He feels that lifting so many corpses after the earthquake made him mentally stronger and helped him realize the fleeting nature of life. This has allowed him to accept the inevitability of life and death, and he is no longer afraid while climbing. Professor Kent Moore, a physicist, focuses on climate conditions in the most remote and northern regions of the world. For the past 15 years, he has worked with surgeon and fellow mountaineer Dr. John Semple from Toronto Women's College Hospital, researching the impact of weather conditions on the well-being and safety of climbers in the Himalayas. In their most recent study, published in High Altitude Medicine and Biology, Moore and Semple aim to better comprehend the circumstances that contributed to the lethal 2015 avalanche. Their research shows that the earthquake that year set off a series of avalanches and highlighted the need for improved modeling and forecasting of such events. The south base camp of Everest is situated on the Khumbu Glacier, a flat plain on the Nepalese side of the mountain. The temporary bivouac serves as a focal point for the 40,000 climbers and hikers who visit the area each year and for the porters and guides who assist them. Moore, who has journeyed through the Khumbu Valley three times, has personally experienced a fatal avalanche there. In 2009, he was about 10 kilometers from the South Everest base camp with his group when they noticed a cloud of snow and ice in the distance. He said, When we got back to base camp the next day, we learned that there were three Sherpas lost. There's a risk whenever you climb in this region that there is the potential for these avalanches. Everest and the nearby peaks contain glaciers and sharp ice falls, which drape over the mountainsides like frozen cascades. Signs of avalanches are visible in the form of massive snow mounds known as avalanche cones, which appear where ice and snow have fallen from above. Although avalanches are a frequent occurrence in this region, Moore states that there is limited knowledge about their intensity or the stability of the glacier surrounding the Khumbu Valley. The origin of the avalanche in April 2015 was a ridge situated between Pumbari and Lingtran, approximately 900 meters above the camp. To understand the events leading up to the April 2015 avalanche, the researchers examined solar and wind information gathered from weather stations on Kalapatar, a peak roughly four kilometers. It got really dark for a short period of about three or four minutes, Moore said. We interpret that to be a giant plume of snow and ice crystals that moved past the weather station, so there was a reduction of solar radiation that was getting to the site. In an interview in November 2015, Mingma spoke about his efforts to promote trekking and tourism in Nepal post the 2015 accident. He mentioned the economic crisis Nepal was facing after the earthquake, as tourism was their main source of income. To combat this, he and his team aimed to prove to the world that Nepal was still safe for trekking and climbing, and they believed that merely writing about it on social media and websites would not be convincing enough. He also discussed their connection to the Rolling Valley in Nepal. This remote area lacks basic necessities such as electricity, transportation, proper schools, and health posts. The population has decreased from over 300 people to around 50 
Due to the difficult living conditions, causing locals to migrate to the capital city, they hope to make the valley more popular by showcasing its potential for ice and rock climbing, which would attract more tourists and create more job opportunities. Ultimately, their goal is to revive the valley and encourage their people to return home. In 2019, Mingma achieved a historic milestone by becoming the first individual Nepali to successfully reach the summit of all 14 peaks above 8,000 meters without the aid of supplemental oxygen. This extraordinary accomplishment is regarded as one of the most formidable challenges in the world of mountaineering, and only a select few have ever completed it. His triumph serves as a testament to his expertise, resolve, and passion for the mountains. Furthermore, he has been actively engaged in encouraging sustainable and conscientious tourism practices in Nepal. He has been an outspoken proponent of the conservation of the Himalayan ecosystem and has dedicated his efforts to raising awareness about the consequences of tourism in the area. Mingma maintains that responsible tourism can benefit local communities and safeguard the pristine beauty of the mountains for future generations. Thanks for joining us on this incredible journey of survival and determination. If you enjoyed Mingma Giyab's story, hit that like button and subscribe for more amazing content. See you in the next one.